but I was always I was always told March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. Well, it's the end of March and I didn't see no lamb. I got a lot of lion. I got like the Lion King. I got like I'm waiting for Carol Baskin to show up. The tiger, whatever. It's all big animals and teeth. Oh, look at the flag blowing. Look at the flag. It's blowing like crazy out there. And it's been like cold, 30 degrees almost dropping down a couple weeks ago, and then it comes back up, it gets warm, and then it gets cold again, and then the wind's blowing and it's so bad you can't even go fish. How am I supposed to fish? How are we supposed to fish in this? I don't know. Let's go find out. <laughs> To fish this month, or last month as it was, because now it's April, we are going to bounce around a lot. So I'm going to start right here. It's low tide. We went down to 9th Street, the west side, and I saw some yabby holes down there. And I'm like, wow, it's so early in the year for these things to be out. I wish I had brought my yabby pump. And I'm going to get it out. I'm going to come back and get it out. But for right now, we'll just fish with some you know the regular got a double drop rig i put a little fish bites on there and then just a little tiny piece of shrimp these are small hooks i've got one hooks number one hooks and i've got some one odd hooks the biggest ones i have i'm trying to go smaller this year i feel like i'm going to have better luck with the smaller hooks and i'm just casting it out as far as i can because it was low tide and the bar was kind of out a little bit further than i wanted it to be but what I found was <laughs> nothing was biting. And if you watched the last video, one of my tips was, if nothing's biting, get up and move. So I did. I moved down the beach to what looked like a better spot, just looking at the waves, trying to read the water. And it just looked better to me. And so I just set up there, same thing, same bait, cast out. And right away, I ran into a pocket of um, puffer. So who doesn't love puffer? So I'm reeling this little guy in. And when I say little guy, I mean little guy because all the puffer I'm catching this year are teeny tiny little puffer fish. I don't know why they're so small. They're like five inches. And I feel bad. I can't keep this. I've got to let him go because he, my pinky is bigger than this little fish. He's like, I could get a, I get a fish tank. He'd make, he'd make a cute little fish tank. Now here's my catch and release for puffers. They're all puffed up. You let him go. He flips over. You're like, oh, what? And then he turns over. He swims away. He's fine. He's fine, everybody. Don't worry about it. Now, when I say I ran into a pocket of puffers, I mean a pocket of puffers. Look at this, doubled up, doubled up, two puffers at once. I mean, it's great. Every time you cast out, if you get into a pocket of puffers, you're going to pull up some puffers. Not really very exciting. I will tell you the tip about catching these things for me. I had just been leaving the rod sitting in the, in the rod holder, and the puffer will come up and nibble on it. And if you have a pretty stiff rod, which I do, my pen prevails pretty stiff, you won't even see the rod move because they don't even make... And they'll just steal your bait. You won't see the rod move. You won't even know. So what I had to do was hold the rod and feel the line and wait for the little nibble, 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 nibble. And as soon as they felt the nibble, nibble, then I would start reeling it in and they'd just get hooked on those circle hooks and they'd come right in. So I, I did continue to catch puffer. And if I wanted to keep these little boys, <laughs> we would have had a nice little fish fry. But again, I just felt like they were too small. They were just all, I don't know why, maybe because it's spring. They're just from last year's brood. <laughs> <laughs> so swim away a little puffer and, and live and get bigger. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to my next spot. So the kids came down and they wanted to go fishing and they wanted to catch some puffer. And we were going to meet up with some people at 58th Street. But it turned out to be so windy this day that the, the surf was so rough that it just was impossible to fish. Like right here, I've got this line out. Threw it out one time. There's a four ounce weight on here. And you can see if you look here, the line is basically parallel to the beach. I, mean, I had casted it straight out and it just kind of floated all the way back in. Got pulled all the way back to the shore. So it just wasn't going to happen. So we just decided we'd pack it up. Up, we get out of there and we try some other spots to make sure that everybody would know <laughs> that there were no fishing there uh, the kids decided to write uh, a sign so that people would know <laughs> carving into the sand there there are no fish here <laughs> well, that's not true there could have been fish there but if fishing was a little bit impossible so I was like well you know what at, we're at 58th Street, right across the street is the marina, the fish house restaurant used to be, um, the, bo the boat ramp was, well, it's the boat ramp still there, but there's no dock. So I was like, let's just drive across the street. We can probably catch some whiting, maybe some puffer over there. Um, you know, we can give it a shot. You know, who, there's trout in there. Who knows, right? It's the Montgomery Slough right there. So we just drove across. We had our surf rods, which was overkill, but because we were planning on going in the surf, but it just wasn't going to happen. It was still windy. Look at her hair blowing. It was still windy as all get out. But we were just like, this side should be nice and calm, you know, at least blocked from the wind. And, and we won't have to worry about that and tide pulling it out. So I pointed out all the pilings out there where the old docks used to be. And I'm like, there's going to be fish around there. That's great structure. Unfortunately, <laughs> that boat was tied up as well to an anchor. And we lost a couple of rigs to, to those pilings. And, and I'm sure if he pulls in his anchor, he's going to be like, wow, where did 
do you get all these cool rigs from? <laughs> and so we started catching some fish. And Kane has, I guess, caught a lot of fish, not in the ocean anyway. So he was happy with the with the croaker. <laughs> no, I never am, but he was happy with the croaker. And we did run into a mess of croaker. We were kind of catching croaker after croaker. Uh, you know, I've got this big, this is 6,500 6, pen reel, and I'm pulling up, you know, five inch croakers. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of overkill, kind of embarrassing. So I, I just kind of felt like, you know, they were having fun, but I'm like, yeah, we, we start hitting all these croaker. There's probably not much else here, but croaker. I was hoping maybe a black drum would have been in there. That would have been nice. Pull up a nice 16 inch black drum. Possible on shrimp but no such luck so after losing a couple of rigs and catching a whole bunch of croaker i was just like let's get out of here uh, the last fish we caught that was a little bit different at least was this guy right here and this is a silver perch but he was about the same size as the croaker so <laughs> he wasn't even making me happy but it was just nice to see we got something else besides croaker so i was like let's take it down to the point let's pack this up and go down to the point so for those of you who may not be familiar, the point is basically the west end of the island. And really the side on the ocean is what most people refer to as the point. But if you go to the west end of the island, you can also go to the sound side, if you will. It's the ICW. It's actually where ICW meets Montgomery Slough meets Folly River. Kind of it's at the inlet there. Everything's happened at once. Uh, it's directly across from Holden Beach and Sheep Island is down there as well. So we just went down there and I was like, let's just stay on the on the ICW side. Uh, it was still windy as all get out, but I was like, we can we can throw some shrimp here and just try it out. Maybe again, some black drum, maybe a whiting coming from the inlet, who knows. But uh, we weren't having too much luck there either. It just seemed like it was a bad fishing day all around. The wind was just too crazy. I don't know, maybe the wind, maybe the fish don't like the wind. In any case, the only person who caught anything was Grayson. And I think the kids were getting a little slap happy at this point because Kane was like, you need some help reeling it in? And Grayson was like, yeah, it's a big one. Help me reel it in. And I'm like, dudes, this is serious business. This is fishing. Don't be goofing off. This is like the best fish, if not the only fish you're going to catch here all afternoon, right? And it turned out to be a really decent sized whiting. Now, these guys wanted to catch some whiting. They really wanted to catch some puffer. They wanted to take them back with them. They live in Charlotte. They wanted to take them back in there and, and have a little fish fry, make some fish tacos. And this was the only fish of the day that would have been worth keeping but uh, since it was the only one of the day they decided ah we're just going to throw it back we were just about ready to wrap it up we were getting wind burned so here's the catch and release bye bye little whiting we decided to go get some dinner for dinner we decided to check out the 49th street bar and grill it's basically this is a new restaurant obviously on 49th street right there in the main part of the island and it's got a great outdoor setting let's see the picnic tables they got the cornhole there you could play although it was it was raining by this point they, they, they had security cameras and i was like i'm bringing in my security camera too so man we're we're in syncopato right there buddy uh, inside when you first go in this is from coming in from the back nice bar out there lots of tvs and then you can go inside and that's where we were going to go excuse we'd wanted to eat and we didn't want to sit out in the rain so we decided to go inside fun decor nice paintings in there like the table made out of a surfboard right and the wait staff is pretty friendly and helpful and even though they just started i feel like they've, they've got it together pretty well so kim and i sylvie all decided we were going to get some dinner and just sit there now check out the size of this tv if you're looking to go have a drink and watch the game that's a pretty nice tv to watch the game and look at the fancy lights under the bar it all lights up and changes color so that's fun too the menu uh you know it's pretty standard kind of like what you can expect to kind of and grill hamburgers uh you know appetizers um they had a fish sandwich that's what i'm gonna get um a good range of beers some ipas on draft which is what i was gonna get and uh you know like i said starters so we decided to get some um, mozzarella sticks and nothing fancy, right? This isn't a fancy restaurant. It's a bar and grill. Great place, it seems, to go to get some beer, watch the game, because that giant TV set, and just get some good, solid pub food, and you're going to be good to go. So I'm like, I'm going to get the fish sandwich, because how can I go wrong? <laughs> Came out, got my beer, and I was, like, feeling pretty good. It's a nice little restaurant. wasn't too crowded, but since then, I've gone past, and it kind of seems like it is getting more and more crowded. I think everyone on the island is trying to check it out. So you might, you might want to get there early <laughs> if you want to get a table. Now, since we did bring Sylvie, and she used to work in the restaurant business, I figured we should get her take on it. Let's see what she has to say. So we are now in our new restaurant called 49th Street on 49th Street. So uh, kind of funny. Um, very pleasant, a little bright, but all good. So we'll see how the food tastes, right? Okay, I guess I jumped the gun there asking her about the, the restaurant when we haven't even received the food yet. But, you know, I did ask her some of her likes and dislikes and, you know, maybe like, do you like long walks on the beach? And I asked her a couple of questions and I was like, so do you got a Do you got a guy in your life? You know, what's the status here? 
still dating oh, oh, it's, 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 oh, oh, I see. I see. Available. <laughs> So there you go, guys. This is the first time we've turned the Sands in the Surf channel into our version of eHarmony or Match, or I guess um, Fisherman Only. <laughs> go to FishermanOnly.com. All right, the food came out. Here's my sandwich. It looks pretty good, and I'll tell you what, it was pretty good. Again, like I said, nothing fancy. It's pub food, but good, solid pub food, French fries. Kim got a Reuben, and uh, we ate, and we and we left. <laughs> so it's time to get out there and go fishing. I want to get back down to 9th Street at low tide, and this time I'm going to bring my pump because I want to get some of them yabbies. So I'm like, I got to take the kids back out and get them on some fish. And if I had some yabbies, I know we'd be successful with something more than just croaker. So Kane had never seen the pump before either, so he was curious to see how this was going to work. Basically, if you ever, I have a whole video about this. I'll put a link to it up above, but basically it works like this. You find those holes I was talking about, I saw, showed you earlier earlier in the video and when you see them smoking when you see like the sand coming out of them it looks like they're little volcanoes you just basically pump down and the yabby floats right up to the top so here it is basically what is a yabby it's a ghost shrimp it looks like a shrimp on one end has a big claw the males have a big claw on the other end so sort of like a fiddler crab kind of a frankenstein creature shrimp on one end fiddler crab and mushy orange stuff in the middle and the fish love the mushy orange stuff it's like you can cast one of these and every time you cast you'll get a hit you'll get a hit and a lot of times the big fish because they're like oh wow go shrimp we don't get those too often <laughs> let's eat it yum <laughs> it's like when you throw a shrimp they're like yeah i see this all the time but you throw a ghost shrimp and they're like yeah it's a special it's like a smorgasbord it's like when you get you know to go to ruth chris and get a a little surf and turf, a little lobster there and some filet mignon. <laughs> that's, that's what yabbies are to fish. So I pumped up a good b bunch of them. Although I wasn't going to fish in the surf because I was like, again, it doesn't look bad there. But it, it is. It's bad. It's still bad. It's been windy this the whole month. <laughs> it's three-pointer right there. The whole month has been like... Um, and people are always so crazy when they see the yabbies like what is that it's a yabby what's a yabby like you know they're gonna go extinct if you keep digging them up i'm like you never heard of them until just now and they're gonna go extinct i don't think we need to worry about it i dug up 10 we're gonna we're gonna be okay the yabby population is gonna be okay now flounder on the other hand those are extinct but yabbies we still got a few laying around <laughs> anyway back to what i was saying about march comes in like a line yeah still sticks around like a line you know it's actually april and we're still having wind today i think 15 16 miles an hour so that's crazy all right, secret spot, 39th Street. Have never been down here before, but we were just going past it, and I was like, what is this place? And it looked like a boat ramp. And then I saw they had public beach access, and I was like, well, we can park here, and we can fish here. And and I don't know, maybe a lot of guys do fish here. I've never seen it before, and I never fished it. That is Montgomery Slough there, and it is next to a house with a dock. So it's kind of tight, especially for these big surf rods, which is so overkill. But again, that's what we had. And I was like, just let's take the yabbies, and let's throw them out there and see what we can get. So we did, and I lost a few more rigs here too. So some of those pilings, I guess that guy who owns the dock, he's going to get another bunch of my good rigs. <laughs> all right, Kane, it's okay. It happens to all of us. <laughs> Kane is like the master at losing my rigs. It's okay, I'll make new ones. All right, so I put the Yabby on there with some Miracle Thread. That's what I was wrapping it up with. Miracle Thread keeps the Yabby from falling off. If you don't have the Miracle Thread, you can kiss the Yabby goodbye because they're so mushy. Now, this is Cameron, and she got herself a fish. And she was so proud of it because it was so big, and I don't even know. This might be overslot. Is this an overslot croaker? <laughs> Okay, I told her like I'm gonna hold it close and you like pretend you're holding it up there And it'll look like a really big fish. That's how you do it. You just hold it up closer to the camera uh, But we're gonna let those go. So these guys had a pretty good time uh, Catching croaker and we were kind of catching them one after another now again when I start catching croaker I usually like to just cut out and leave a move or something like that But I just this is the only spot we had left the wind was so bad We couldn't fish anywhere else and Grayson actually was the one to catch the big fish here um, he started reeling it in and he's like, I think I got a flounder. And I'm like, why? He goes, I just, it, the way it hit, it just felt like a flounder. And he pulled it up and lo and behold, the endangered flounder. <laughs> and it might've been a little short anyway, but of course they're out of season right now. So it's going to have to go back in the water. So here is the catch and release for the flounder. Uh, I know that breaks some of your hearts. <laughs> like I said, that was short, but if it wasn't, it still would have broke some hearts. People love their flounder, but no, nope, it's swimming away. Hey, somebody else is going to get it next year and it's going to be a lot bigger. Okay, going full circle, back to 9th Street. You see what I'm doing here? Wrapping up a nice big finger mullet on a 5 odd hook. I took two rods down, one with a 5 odd hook that I put the mullet on, and one that I just did the same shrimp, just like I started the video, with a little piece of fish, fish bice there, kind of entice the fish, and the waves are still crazy. Like I said, this is 9th Street again. I just, like I said, I want to go full circle and just end the video the same way we started. But the difference is, 
why I wrapped up this finger mullet here is because I've heard that there have been bluefish. Now, to me, it seems really early for bluefish, but I've heard reports that there have been some bluefish, and I'm like, what the heck? Maybe we'll get one. So I just cast that rod out there. As far as I could, I just let it sit. Now, the tide is coming up. We're on a rising tide here, so it's great to do a big fish like that, a big finger mullet like that, because I can just let it sit out there, and as the tide comes in, the water's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and I caught on just the shrimp, my own little whiting here to match Grayson's whiting from earlier. Now, if we kept all the whiting, we probably would have been doing okay. This is just under a foot. He's probably about 11 inches. So a, a decent little whiting. And I could have took him home and made some fish tacos. And probably if I had caught another, I would have kept him. But I kind of decided I was going to do a little catch and release. To follow up the whiting, <laughs> again, just like we started the video, got my fair share of puffer here and uh, little baby little ones again. I mean, ridiculous, right? What are we looking at? Three inches, two inches? And just like in the beginning of the video, I was catching puffer after I hit that pocket, that pocket of puffer, the puffer pocket. I hit the puffer pocket again. But like I said, these are all little, so none of them are going in the bucket. I caught a bunch more, but I'm not even going to show you a video of them because how many times can you watch me catching and reeling in a puffer that I'm just going to let go? So forget about the puffer. However, the other line, I was watching it, and I could tell, and I could feel there were nibbles on it, there were bites on it. And I was thinking maybe it's something, a shark or something like that, and he's just biting at it, biting at it, pecking at it. And then finally I was like, let me check it out. I reeled it in, and there was nothing on the line. I'm like, okay, put that fish on with miracle thread so where'd it go so i wrapped up another one i'm like i'm just gonna wrap up another one let's see what happened maybe that one got off somehow maybe you know the fish pecked it off i can't imagine it's a little fish you know it's got to be a big fish just got maybe just hit it right it just came off so look at the rod look at the rod right there it is jiggling like crazy that's definitely a fish tugging on it so i'm like i'm gonna check this out i'm gonna hold on to it and i'm gonna pull it back in again because there's got to be something there I reel it back in again and I get it all the way back to the surf. Now, these are a decent cast, right? I'm reeling for a while. <laughs> like, takes time and energy. And when I reel it in, I got nothing but a fish head. So something, obviously, was biting at it and something that could eat it with some teeth, like not just a little fish. So third time. Third time's a charm. Put that bait out, and this is what I got. It's a blue fish. All right. <laughs> We're here with Grayson Sands at Tranquil Harbor, and he's about to try Sands in the Surf wings for the first time. So let's, let's see what happens. I've heard they're spicy. They're not as fishy as I was expecting. You haven't tried it. But I'll try it. It's got a kick. <laughs> but it tastes good. It's got a really good flavor. Um, I'm a little scared. Nice presentation. Um, here we go in. Blue cheese or no blue cheese? No blue cheese? No, not just dark. <laughs> Ooh, a little spicy. <laughs> a lot of spicy. Why are you drinking so much water? I'm just thirsty. Oh god. <laughs> We're a little Your eyes are awful red. Yeah, I was um, just sad. Just thinking about sad things. Puppies dying. I'm sad I'm running out. <laughs> I actually think it was definitely the best wings on the island, hand down. You can't get hand wings down. like this. Hand down, you can't get wings like this anywhere else, that's for sure. Here I am, eating a wing. A girl eating a wing. Feeding the stigma. <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's kind of... I mean, you guys said it best. The flavor is addicting. I can't explain why. <laughs> it's really hot. The flavor is great. There's a lot of flavor. It's very, very spicy, but the flavor is what keeps me coming back. What are you doing there, Caleb? Trying to cool these. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Trying to cool them down a little bit. I don't think that's what it works. A little, little ice. It always works. They eat your hot ones? They're ear, ear, ear he, made them, he made everybody try I them. I didn't make them. They ate <laughs> 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 